Happy football season. Time to talk about what we see ahead in the AFC with Tony Dungy, Mike Florio, and Rodney Harrison. All right, I will throw out the first question. Each of you has a card with a question. We have not seen each other's questions, so this is all ad lib. He's, all looking, at, he's looking at mine. No peeking. See yours? No peeking. <laughs> I'm going to go first. What will the Patriots' identity be post Gronk? Rodney? Um, just talking to Coach Belichick, he said offensively they're going to have to find creative ways of doing things because they don't have an a outstanding receiving core. I think they're going to run the ball, play action pass. Well, whenever Ben Watson gets back, um, he's suspended for four games. You know, he'll be a big part of that offense. But other than that, Mike, I, I just think it's the same thing, short, intermediate passes and running the football. Yeah, and I'm not ready to say it's post-Gronk. I, I think that there's a good chance he comes back this year. Someone had pegged it earlier this summer at 40% that he'll return and that if Tom Brady ever picks up the phone and makes that personal plea to Rob Gronkowski, that'll be a huge factor. He'd have to put on some weight. Right. He's looking he pretty thin. thin. He's looking skinnier than you. But he'll, uh, he'll, he'll <laughs> I, I, I'm not ready to, to declare the Gronkowski era over. Well, the good news for the rest of the league, they don't have to deal with Gronk. The bad news is that that means the ball's in Tom Brady's hands. Tom is going to have to be the focal point, and he can still do it. He knows where to go with the ball. I've seen him. We played against them in 06 um, playoffs. I couldn't even name a receiver on that team. And they put up points, put up 34 points a game. So Tom knows how to move the ball. They're going to be fine on offense. We should Caldwell is going to be offended by that. Was he on that team? Yeah, I think he was. Yeah. I didn't even know he was on the team. Yeah. That was my teammate. teammate. You were there, right? So it doesn't matter. Yeah. What's interesting is the Patriots are always one evolutionary step ahead, it seems. Mm -hmm. Well, like last year, they were playing with a fullback, a higher percentage of snaps than many of the other teams in the league. And we saw that in the Super Bowl against the Rams. That was defense and ball control that really won that game, not an explosive offense. So let's see what this version is going to look like, You know like, what Tony. the Patriots are great at? They look at every single single game as a different entity. So whatever your team is weak in, that's what they're going to attack that that particular game. And that's why they're tough to defend. Think about what they did in AFC Championship game against the, the Chargers. They ran the ball yeah. and over 200 yards. The Chiefs. Chiefs. The Chargers game right. before that. Exactly. The, but then yeah, the Chiefs the game one. after that. They looked like two different yeah, teams. Because in the Chiefs game, they had to go up and down the field to match Mahomes. Mm -hmm. And they did. Uh, who has question two? I have question okay. two. And <laughs> speaking of Patrick Mahomes, I loved him last year. 50 touchdown passes his first year starting. Can defenses catch up with him this year? Um, yes, I think just having film on him, um, being able to, to, to spy him and, you know, nope. <laughs> no, no, good no, answer. No, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying you create something. Like a defender. You know what? I, I was trying to create something, Mike, but it's just not there. This kid is so good. He's so smart. Um, he's got so many weapons. They added some weapons throughout the draft. They can run the ball. They got a great tight end. I, th I think he's going to have a, a, a magnificent year. It won't be 50 touchdowns. It might be 40 touchdowns. But it's going to be tough stopping him. I think the best hope is to drop back and keep everything in front of you and force him to, to be patient mm -hmm. and not go for the big play. But once everything starts to fall apart, that's when he's at his best. And it doesn't matter how much film you've watched or what your plan is. You can't catch him. He'll make those throws quickly. You have no idea the ball's even out of his hands. Throw it left-handed, right-handed, with his arm in different motions, his body in different motions. It's, you just can't, you can't stop it. Tony, I'm just curious. I think as uh, your old defensive back days, your defensive coordinator days, your head coach days, you can watch film on a guy, but he also evolves as well. Patrick Mahomes is going to be a year better if that's possible. And I, I see that. He's a humble kid. He's a hard worker. He, he wants to be great. And I think he'll continue to progress and, and be better. The one negative or the one fly in the ointment could be not having Kareem Hunt. Because if I, th I think if I was a defensive coordinator, I would go in saying, you know what, I may play eight defensive backs and just make them run the ball and really try to take away the passing game. Uh, but... I'm, I'm with you. I don't see people stopping him. Is Kansas City as good as New England in your mind, guys? They added some pieces on the defensive side. I think offensively they're better than New England, but I think New England's defense is a lot better I, than I Kansas City. I still have City's. to see that defense. One of the things that Bill Belichick is adamant about is winning on the road. They were 3-5 and five mm -hmm. last year. Right. That meant they had to go to Kansas City for the AFC Championship, and they barely got out of there alive. And I think that, that everything this year is focused on winning on the road, getting the best possible record. So when there's a rematch, if there's a rematch in the postseason, they can bring the Chiefs to Foxborough and not have to go a back A coin there. flip, and Kansas City could have very well been the team of the Super Bowl because you felt at the end of the fourth quarter of that AFC yeah. Championship game, neither team was going to be stopped. Not close. They're really close. Kansas City, no D Ford, no Justin Houston. Yes. That's two great pass rushers that somehow you got to replace. They're a little older, though, Coach. They're not the, they weren't the but same somebody's players. Somebody's got to replace. They got, they got Frank, Frank Clark. Clark. They got Frank Clark. They got Chris Jones. And they have they a better yeah. secondary, Tyron too. Tyron Matthew. Okay. 
All right, question three, Mr. Florio, I think it's yours. All right, what is the Colts ceiling with Jacoby Brissett at quarterback? I, I like Jacoby. I think um, Jacoby's a smart young man, very patient. I think when he initially came in, when Andrew Luck got hurt, I mean, he had no blocking. Now they have one of the best offensive lines. They got some guys at the skill position. They got a, all, they got a Pro Bowl tight end in Eric Ebram. They can run the football. I, I think they can get to the playoffs. And you know what the other difference is? Jacoby has been running this team all offseason program, all training camp. When he came the first time, he, he's there for a week yep. right. and trying to go. But he has been the starting quarterback for the last six months. So uh, this is a different time around, and I, I like where the Colts I, are. I want to ask you guys just about the whole luck situation because you, uh, you, Rodney and Tony, have lived in locker rooms. You know what that building of a team is like. There was so much emotion from everyone, from the fans, from fellow players around the league who've gone to social media defending Andrew Luck's decision, uh, from people who thought that maybe Andrew Luck should have done this in March or April compared to when he said, you know what, I, I just don't have this in me anymore. What is your feeling that the toll that this is going to take on the Colts locker room as the players ask those questions and they've lost the face of the franchise? I know, I know the other guys are good, but he was the face of that the, team. The, the first thing that occurred to me I was kind of angry because my old school mentality kind of kicked in like, wow, he's quitting on his team. It's two weeks before the regular season. Right. Why is he quitting? You know, we all have injuries. We all have difficult things that we're facing. Why couldn't he just go on IR and maybe take four or five months off and maybe, you know, three months off and see what happens when he comes back? Then the other side kicks in when you're a little bit more reasonable. And then you never know what a guy's going through. You never know how much pain he's in and mentally and, you know, the situation at home and if it's affecting his wife and his kids. So I get it now. And, you know, un un unfortunately for me, I got angry, but then I, you know, I, I kind of had to get back to my senses, Mike. Well, and I think one of the big things the Colts have going for them is the presence of Frank Reich as the mm -hmm. head coach because he's the guy who was the offensive coordinator in Philadelphia when they lost Carson Wentz mm -hmm. for the season. In comes Nick Foles. They win the Super Bowl. Sure. He was the quarterback of the Bills for that game against the Oilers, and he's credited you, Coach for having that ability to deal with adversity, to shrug it off and focus on what needs to be done. So Andrew Luck's gone. Hey, we got Jacoby Brissett. We got a team we feel good about. We have to go forward. We have no choice. Yeah, and that to me is a big thing. Frank Reich just playing the role of the backup quarterback and instilling that confidence in Jacoby Brissett. We can do this. We'll tailor the game plans to him. But the other thing that I think could end up being a big positive for the Colts, Andrew Luck was beloved in that locker room. Mm -hmm. So all the heat that he's taking now and all the negatives, kind of your first reaction, those players are sensing that. And you know what they want to prove? Hey, let's, let's win this for Andrew. Let, let's show people that we care about this guy. And I think that's going to be big. It's such a great point. And I think we, we have changed to a different era of understanding what's going on. Players make a lot of money. They can make decisions for themselves. They don't need football to be their be-all, end-all, especially somebody like Andrew, who stayed in college for his senior year when he could have been the number one pick. Stanford educated. When he goes over to Europe, he's not worried about football. He, he has a lot of broad topics in his life outside of being the quarterback. We hold the quarterback of an NFL team and a star quarterback on a pedestal as it's the greatest job in the world. We don't see what comes with it, and it's not for everybody. So if Andrew Luck didn't want to live in those shoes the rest of his career, that's the decision well, he made. And, Unfortunately, and to, it's publicly decided what everyone feels about. And to Coach's point, I don't think they, they look and say, hey, let's win this for Andrew. We have a new quarterback. Jacoby Brissett is our quarterback. You can't focus on a guy that's not in your locker room because, mm -hmm. in a sense, he walked away from the team. So I don't think they're going to be rallying, hey, let's win this for Andrew. I think it's say, hey, Co Jacoby, we trust you. We, we, we believe in you. We see you every day. We know you can get it done. And maybe, you know, maybe Quentin Nelson looks at the offensive line and says, hey, guys, we're going to have to run the ball 30 times a game in order to win football games. We're going to have to do what we have to do. And you might not have the luxury of passing the ball 50 times in a game with Jacoby Brissett. Here's the other benefit. All of a sudden, the Colts don't stand out on your schedule anymore. So they're going to have that benefit of maybe catching some people by surprise. Those four, first few weeks, they've got the Chargers, the Raiders, the Falcons. All of a sudden, Andrew Luck's gone. This is an easy out for us now. And that makes it, I think, a better situation for the Colts to, to, to pile up some wins because teams are going to take them more lightly without Andrew Luck. And the one thing Rodney said, this is a great offense offensive line. Mm -hmm. I mean, not a yes. good offensive line, a great offensive line. Now, if they say, you know what, we've got to emphasize our running game and we've got to get going and you offensive linemen, you're, you may have to win some games right. for us. Those guys will take that on and, and accept and, the challenge. And we know what an offensive line not being there did for Andrew Luck. It physically got him beat up and maybe a contributing factor 
to all of this, but we certainly wish well, all of us who've been around Andrew think the world of him. And, and I'll tell you this, Mike, I was there a week before the announcement. Uh -huh. He was working like a maniac. He was drilling on the field. He's working out. He's running pass sets, throwing the ball. In his mind, he was coming back. So I don't know when this uh, announcement, you know, when it came to him, but it wasn't the type of thing where he was walking away. He was doing everything in his power. I tell you this, back. if I was in, in that locker room, I'd tell the guys, hey, man, Andrew's not here. We love him. We appreciate him. But we got to go get our money. Yeah. We got to go get well, it. And I yeah. think that's what's happened. It's one no of the more question. fascinating stories to come down the pike, not just in the NFL, but in sports, the timing of it and everything else. All right, question four belongs to you, Mike, Mr. are you believing the Browns hype? You're looking at me. <laughs> I, I've I'm got looking start. at you. Are you <laughs> believing the hype? here first? Uh, I think they're going to be good. What's I don't, good? I don't know if they're ready to win the AFC North. Baltimore and Pittsburgh know a thing or two about winning championships. I think they love hearing all the noise coming out of Cleveland and pointed towards Cleveland. I just think those two teams who, as Pittsburgh, we've talked about, has reconstituted without Bell and Brown, but they still have some pretty good people. They've boasted their defense. Baltimore is very excited about what their offense is going to look like going forward because they've made the all-in Lamar Jackson decision there. I I think Cleveland's going to be in the mix, but I don't think they're going to walk in and win the division. What is this the year. mix? You mean like playoff? Like nine and seven, eight and eight, yeah, like that. I, I'm not ready to say they're going to win 11, 12 games. That's a mass, a massive jump. It doesn't mean they're not talented. It doesn't mean Landry and OBJ together aren't going to be fun. It doesn't mean they're not going to provide headlines week in, week out. They were close in a lot of games. They were going to learn to win. I'm just not ready to say this is an 11, 12 win team. But you guys are the experts. I defer to you. Well, my son Justin has him in the Super Bowl already. <laughs> He's you not know, alone either. He has bought into that talent. But I, talent, as we all know, doesn't define you. Uh, I, I had seven teams in, in Indianapolis. Our Super Bowl team was probably number five in terms of talent. But they were the group that could handle adversity, that could hang together. That's what I don't know about this team yet. What's going to happen when you have a two-game losing streak? What's going to happen when you get an injury? And what's going to happen when so-and-so doesn't get the ball enough, this guy doesn't get enough passes? You know, that's what I want to say. You know, Coach, and that's what I've been preaching probably the last few months. You know, when you have – if you have Baker and he doesn't get Odell Beckham the ball after four games, he may only have ten catches. Will he moan and will he yell and scream and throw a fit? That's the thing. How, how will they deal with adversity? And, I mean, that's, that's how you judge that's, the team. That's the key. And it could come as early as week one. Mike Vrabel knows how to coach up the Titans. And they play up to the level of the competition. Now, they also play down to the level of the competition. But for week one, they're going to be written off by everybody. And if they surprise the Browns, and the Browns have to go to New York what for week two. What how, happens And then? what is Freddie Kitchen? Freddie, a year ago, Coach, we yes. would have never pegged Freddie Kitchens as a short list head coaching candidate for 2019. And now he's in it. And it's going to be down to him if they do hit that adversity. How does he guide that locker room around it? And we won't know until it happens. I'm excited to watch him play because I, they've, they've increased this target around them for a team that wasn't a championship team. You know, usually in the NFL, the championship teams don't talk a lot, right? They've talked a lot. They haven't won anything yet. So they, yeah. they've drawn the yeah. attention, and they've got the personalities to handle it now. OBJ loves the attention. Baker loves the attention. Jarvis Landry. Jarvis Landry. <laughs> and, and they're talented. And we're not talking about where they're real talent. Miles Garrett, they've got some terrific talent on the defensive side yeah, of the I ball. I think Pittsburgh wins the division. You think Pittsburgh? Yeah. What do you they, think, they, Tony? I'm not ready to write off Baltimore either. I think yeah. it's going to be a dogfight all, all the way. I just want to see what – if they lose week one, I want to see what happens. Mike, who would you I, I, I think Pittsburgh just because of all the fallout from Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell pulling everyone tighter together and, and giving them a determination that they haven't had in a long time to be disciplined, to be focused, and get the most out of their talent. I get to finish. Speed round. Quick, quick answers to these questions. Starting with Rodney. Can the Steelers contend without A.B. and Bell? Yes. Yes. Absolutely can, yes. A.B. in Oakland, more production or more drama? I think more drama. He's going to get frustrated because they're going to double-team him a lot, frustrate him, take him out the game, and he'll get back to his antics. Back in March, Larry Fitzgerald said to Antonio Brown, publicly, be careful what you wish That's for right. if you want out of Pittsburgh. And Derek Carr, all due respect, is not Ben Roethlisberger. I think you're going to see a ton of production. John Gruden knows how to get good receivers the ball I think the drama is going to match the production. I think it's going to be equal, too. <laughs> I think he's going to produce. I can't wait to watch it. For this season, you buy stock in Darnold or Allen, the quarterbacks, the young quarterbacks in the AFC East with the Jets and Buffalo? I would say Darnold, not Allen, because Allen doesn't have a lot of – they don't have a lot of weapons out there. He doesn't have a great offensive line. I like Sam Darnold. I think he's going to be terrific. 
I think those two teams are going to be right in the mix for a wild card berth, especially Ooh, now. Buffalo? With, really? One of those two. Jets? Between Buffalo and the Jets, one of those two teams is going to be in the mix, especially now with the Colts. Okay. And 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 I, th- I believe in Darnold, but Josh Allen showed us a surprising degree of potential the way he can run the football. But uh, Sims and I have been saying it all offseason, Jets and the Bills, and they play week one. One right. of those two teams, I think, may steal a wild card berth. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm just wait. Just wait. Uh-huh. I knew I smelled some alcohol on the Oh, jeez. Stop that. Uh-huh. I'm going to hurt my man here because I'm going to say Josh Allen too. I think that mobility and moving around in the pocket. I, He's I like get where killed he is. running around like yeah. that. I like where he is. I, you know the Red Zone channel? I just want all channels to go to Josh Allen when he starts <laughs> running. Immediately just punch that camera. I love watching him play. I don't know if he's going to be more in the pocket, but, man, when he didn't know what he was doing last year and was running around and throwing it, it was fun to watch. If they get going in Buffalo, watch out, because you know what that place can be. Plus They're Sean McDermott. They're waiting. But this is being recorded, right? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, Buffalo, did really? You, did you ever want to be a lawyer? Because you were so good at holding people's comments <laughs> against them, man. <laughs> Lamar Jackson, outlook for year two. Do you think the Baltimore quarterback is improved this year? I think they. I think yes. I think a year definitely helps him with his experience and his confidence. Um, I think having a good defense, and you know, he has to be able to trust himself in the pocket to be able to throw the ball down the field. Yeah, I think it's a real transition, and Baltimore's done a great job of keeping us all guessing as to what their offense yeah. is going to be. Are they going to run? Are they going to pass? What are they going to do? And I think they, they revel in that, and nobody knows what to prepare for, but I think Jackson will be better. They keep saying, we haven't shown our offense. We've got all this new stuff. Uh, I think Lamar is going to give people some headaches running the football, but I still don't think he's a great passer on the NFL level yet. If their defense is good and they're playing with leads, I think it's going to be different. When they fall behind by 10, 12 points, can he consistently, because that happens a few times That's to every team. That's an excellent point, Mike. Can they bring them back yeah, in yeah. those games yeah. and keep it going? Lastly, sleeper team in the AFC. Oof. Mike, are you going to go back to the Jets and the Bills? Did the Jaguars count? They were 5-11 and 11 last year. Absolutely. I'll go the Jaguars. Sure. I'm, I'm taking the Jaguars, too. I was actually at their training camp. Nick Foles, they've still got some chemistry issues between their offense and defense, but Nick Foles will do a lot to solve that and bring them back together. I think they're going to be a team to watch out for. Clock's ticking. I don't – You can't say nobody. the Patriots either. <laughs> I, I don't like the Tennessee Titans. I don't like the Jacksonville Jaguars. But the only reason I do like maybe a little bit Jacksonville is because of the quarterback, Nick Foles. They, he gives them a what chance. What about the Broncos? You believe in the Broncos? Not oh, at why'd you Not do that? Why? Why'd you do that? Not at all. That's where I'm going. There we go. Uh, there's oh, a lot of offense okay. in the AFC West, but Vic Fangio, oh, wherever he goes, defenses are good. A couple guys coming off the edge, you can rush the hey, passer. Hey. People Denver's going to play some they low scoring guys games. last year, right? <laughs> I know, but they've got Vic Fangio, who's really good, right? They have Joe Flacco this year. Is this being recorded, Rodney? That's, that's my whole point. They won't make the playoffs. They Harrison, won't win seven Mike games. Mike Florio, man. Tony Dungeon, Ooh. Mike Tirico, ready for the season in the AFC. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.